Following the death of Queen Elizabeth II, her eldest son, King Charles III, inherited the throne. He also became the new head of the Commonwealth, a non-hereditary role that Charles was declared successor of in 2018. The Commonwealth of Nations is made up of 56 countries from across the globe, including the Maldives, Canada, and New Zealand. During her reign, the late Queen devoted much of her time to preserving and reinforcing the royal family's ties with the Commonwealth. In her final Commonwealth Day message, Her Majesty described the family of nations as a modern, vibrant and connected Commonwealth that combines a wealth of history and tradition with the great social, cultural and technological advances of our time. That the Commonwealth stands ever taller is a credit to all who have been involved. Now, it is up to King Charles to maintain the modern institution his mother spent decades cultivating. But without the personality of Queen Elizabeth, which is entwined with the Commonwealth, the new monarch may face increased challenges. In 2021, Barbados became the first country in almost 30 years to remove the Queen as head of state and become a republic, sparking other Caribbean realms to consider a similar fate. Countries such as Jamaica, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent, and the Grenadines have all expressed Republican sentiment, meaning the future Commonwealth could stand in stark contrast to the one the Queen inherited in 1952. Her Majesty was head of state for as many as 32 countries in her seven-decade reign, at the time of her death, just 14 other than the UK remained. Now, Express.co.uk looks at which countries could see Charles' accession as the time to install a new head of state. Read more, Queen's mysterious handwritten letter lying in vault which can only be opened in 2085 King Charles became head of the Commonwealth following his mother's death, image, Getty Images, several nations have expressed a desire to become republics, image, express. Co.uk, parted from her crown for the final time, inside the Queen's committal service Queen Elizabeth II's 70-year reign came to a symbolic end when she was parted from her crown for the final time, ahead of its official passing to King Charles III. Find out what happened during Her Majesty's committal service. Antigua and Barbuda The Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda has confirmed that the country will give the public a republic referendum within three years. Gaston Brown told ITV on Saturday his plans for a referendum were not an act of hostility. But it is the final step to complete that circle of independence, to ensure that we are truly a sovereign nation. For many, this does not come as a surprise. When Prince Edward and his wife Sophie, Countess of Wessex visited in April, Mr Brown revealed his hope to become a republic and asked the royal couple to use their diplomatic influence to achieve reparatory justice. We're not trying to embarrass you, we're just trying to build awareness, the Prime Minister told the couple. In his response, the Earl of Wessex did not acknowledge or address the issue, saying he had not been keeping notes. However, any change would require a two-thirds majority in a referendum and a 2018 vote to replace the Privy Council with the Caribbean Court of Justice as the final Court of Appeal fell well short of that threshold, failing to reach even a simple majority. Gaston Brown Country will give the public a republic referendum within three years, image, Getty Images, Sophie and Edward undertook a tour of the Caribbean in April, image, Getty Images Jamaica in March, the country's Prime Minister Andrew Holness told Prince William and Kate, Princess of Wales that we are moving on and that Jamaica intended to be an independent, developed, prosperous country. It reaffirmed his earlier declaration, there is no question that Jamaica has to become a republic, which he made during the opening ceremony of Crystal House Jamaica in December last year. He added, we have put together a plan to move towards in a way that is meaningful and substantial in function and form. That is what we are going to do. A simple majority would be enough to remove monarchial rule in Jamaica, and polls have indicated the threshold will probably be met. Mr. Holness did not make any reference to his plans in his statement of condolence, instead, 
he said, Queen Elizabeth's reign was transformative and inspiring, we are saddened that we will not see her light again, but we will remember her historic reign. Andrew Holness told William and Kate that Jamaica is moving on, image, Getty Images Belize Ms. Carrington described Belize as an interesting one to watch, as it is the only country in the Caribbean where Charles could be removed by a parliamentary vote alone. William and Kate's royal tour in March saw them visit Belize, but locals claimed they had not been consulted about their first royal engagement. A few days after the Waleses left Belize, Henry Charles Usher, Minister for Constitutional and Political Reform, reportedly told the country's parliament, perhaps it is time for Belize to take the next step in truly owning our independence. But it is a matter that the people of Belize must decide on. The Bahamas A spokesperson for the Prime Minister of the Bahamas Philip Davis said a republic referendum is not an agenda item of this administration at this time. But the Prime Minister has cited next year's 50th anniversary of independence as a natural moment to consider replacing the monarchy. William and Kate visited Belize during their Caribbean tour in March, image, Getty Images, trending following his and Kate's tour, William signaled any decision by Belize, Jamaica and the Bahamas to break away from the British monarchy and become republics would be supported with pride and respect by the UK. Grenada to Hera Carter, press secretary in the Prime Minister's office in Grenada, told PA that becoming a republic is a natural progression that the country may pursue in the future, but added, the government of Grenada has no immediate plans to change its constitutional status. In June, Arlie Gill, chairman of Grenada's National Reparations Committee, told the I newspaper, that Charles' accession could lead to a Republican backlash, saying, I think it would. He continued, I don't think the Grenadian people are too enthused about Prince Charles. I don't think the prince will get a huge welcome when he ascends to the throne. I don't think we are of that ilk. Don't miss, Andrew looks set to take on Queen's beloved dogs after monarch's death, reveal Queen's poignant last moments with Charles and Anne by her side, insight inside Buckingham Palace, glimpse inside Queen Elizabeth II's home, analysis, Charles and Camilla visited Grenade in 2019, image, Getty Images St. Vincent and the Grenadines Sophie and Edward also visited St. Vincent and the Grenadines during their Caribbean tour in April. There, they were met by protests and calls for slave trade reparations. In July, the Prime Minister, Ralph Gonsalves, proposed a referendum but said it could only go ahead with bipartisan support. He suggested that the country consider replacing the British monarchy with an executive president and that a republic referendum is a national democratic task. Grace Carrington, a research fellow at the UCL Institute of the Americas, told The Guardian, people are looking to St. Vincent as one of the places that could do it. Interestingly, it is the countries on these royal tours that have seen conversations, whereas previously there might have been apathy, the fact of discussions about whether they were invited, who's paying for it, and how anachronistic it can look, has made it relevant. A two-thirds majority would be required in any referendum. In 2009, St. Vincent and the Grenadines failed to abolish the British monarchy in a constitutional referendum. The Queen was dedicated to the growth of the Commonwealth throughout her 70-year reign, image, Getty Images, key moments you may have missed at the Queen's funeral Royal family members attended the Queen's state funeral on Monday, bidding farewell to their mother, grandmother and great-grandmother. The first service was held at Westminster Abbey, with a second taking place at St. George's Chapel. Key moments from the service you may have missed include, King Charles III left a touching note for his mother on top of her coffin, Princess Charlotte wore a significant piece of jewellery to honour the Queen, Prince Andrew fought back tears as he entered Westminster Abbey behind the coffin procession, Kate, Princess of Wales lovingly reassured Prince George by resting her hand on his knee, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry comforted one another, 
holding hands on their way out of the funeral New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has said her government will not pursue becoming a republic following the death of Queen Elizabeth II, saying it is not something New Zealanders feel particularly strongly about, but has speculated that the constitutional change was likely to happen within her lifetime. According to the Associated Press, Ms Ardern said, there's been a debate, probably for a number of years. It's just the pace, and how widely that debate is occurring. I've made my view plain many times. I do believe that is where New Zealand will head, in time. I believe it is likely to occur in my lifetime. But I don't see it as a short-term measure or anything that is on the agenda any time soon. The Queen greets Jacinda Ardern during the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in 2018, image, Getty Images, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said that now is not the time to consider a referendum, image, Getty Images Australia Similarly, in Australia, the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, a firm Republican, created the role of Assistant Minister for the Republic earlier this year, but has since said that now is not the time to consider a referendum. He has not ruled out a future referendum on the issue. He told the Australian Broadcasting Corporation on Sunday, Now is not a time to talk about our system of government. Now is the time for us to pay tribute to the life of Queen Elizabeth, a life well lived, a life of dedication and loyalty including to the Australian people and for us to honor.